Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Lord. Wonderful Savior. God is good. His mercy endures forever. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We honor you, King Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. We magnify you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, King Jesus. You are the Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the ending. You are the living word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We honor you, King Jesus. We honor you tonight, oh God. For your great, your mercy endures forever. Oh, bless him, bless him, bless him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, hallelujah. John 15 and 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Oh, bless the Lord today. Come on, magnify him. He's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of the praise. There's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. Romans 10 and 9 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What a loving God we serve, who provided us salvation. He gave us the remedy for sin that we can come and lay our lives down before him and know that he is good. His mercy endures forever. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1, I charge thee, therefore before God and before the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead and his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with long suffering, with all long suffering and doctrine. The word of God. It's been given to us to give us a divine order to correct us that our lives will be submissive, subservient, be yielded, surrendered, and released into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. Without the Lord on our side, where would we be today? But because of his grace, being sufficient, the Bible says we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But thank God for grace. Because in our weaknesses, his strength is made perfect. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth 
to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at times, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. We've been justified. We've been acquitted. We've been brought into right standing and right relationship with the Lord. God bless you, cuz. Good to see you. Truly, God is amazing. You know, we've been having some great studies these last four months. Dealing with different types of spirits. We're dealing with unclean spirits that attach itself to us as believers. And it's so important that in all thy getting to get an understanding. If you don't get an understanding of God's word, you will continue to live a life of rebellion, a life that's bound and resistful to the promises that God has in his word for us because you will not attain God's promises if you're walking blindly into a pathway of iniquity, if your life is not lined up with God's word, you will continue to walk in a pathway of rebellion, stubborn, resistful. But I guarantee what God has promised, it is for you. It is for you. But you can attain it. You can receive it. You can have it only when you give your life to Jesus in submission. We talked about the spirit of divination, which dealt with many types of witchcraft. We talked about familiar spirits, those spirits that come through generational attachments. We've talked about the spirit of jealousy, how a person could be jealous even when you're doing right because they want what you have. We've talked about a lying spirit, how the enemy would manipulate you to believe in lies that's contrary to God's word. We, now we're going to talk about the perverse spirit. But before we go into our lesson tonight, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, God, we're so honored to come into your presence. I thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to break the bread of life, to share the gospel, the mysteries of the gospel to those who are hearing the word tonight, that their eyes will be open and flooded with light that their ears will be attentive to your voice, to hear what you're speaking to their spirit about changes in their own personal lives. I thank you, Lord God, that our hearts will be receptible to receive the engrafted word with meekness that's able to save our souls from a hell damnation. I thank you, Lord God, for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus that you cleanse us now from all unrighteousness, O oh God, and we thank you that we have been cleansed. And Father, today I've got a report from several people who've been afflicted with the coronavirus. I sing your word right where they are, O oh God, because you said in your word, God, that you heal the broken heart and you bind up their wounds. Send the word, God, right now to heal and deliver to set them free, O oh God, from this affliction that's come upon them. Let the anointing destroy the yoke of every side effect, every symptom, every plague, every discomfort, mentally, physically, emotionally, that you would destroy it by the power of the word of God. You sent your word, God, 
to heal them and deliver them from all destruction. And now, God, we send the word to heal your people, God, who are lying on their bed of afflictions. Those in the hospitals, those in the convalescent homes, those, Father God, who are hurting, those who lost loved ones and their hearts are heavy. That you would lift up the bowed down head, oh God, and be their comfort and their strength. Then I thank you, Lord God, for those who will hear this word tonight, oh God, who purpose in their heart to be attentive, oh God, to receive this word. That something will be said or done, oh God, that will help us all grow in grace and the knowledge of who you are. That you purify our thoughts. That you change our actions and our lifestyles. That they would line up with your word. That everything we do from this day forward, we would purpose in our hearts to seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness. As we lay our lives down as a living sacrifice, I decree healing over my dad and my mom right now, God. Both of them afflicted with some type of illness, God. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. You said there is power in the blood of Jesus. And God, we come in agreement tonight that they're being healed and being delivered right now. Oh God, from coronavirus, from other illnesses, doesn't matter what it is. At the name of Jesus. We command those sickness and affliction and diseases to bow at the name of Jesus. That their bodies will be healed. Their bodies will be recovered. Their bodies will be rejuvenated. Their strength will be, Father God, and, and, and quickened inside of them, oh God, by the life source that's found in knowing Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, for testimonies that are being built up in this season because of your miraculous power that's at work in them to will and do according to your good pleasure. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank those of you who have tuned in tonight to the TNDC the Tuesday night Bible class. I thank you again for your support, how you faithfully tune in each week to hear the word that God has given me to teach. Not only is it helping myself, but I pray it's helping you that God's word is pricking your hearts. It's stirring you up on the inside to give your life over to his lordship and his authority. Even your weaknesses, your struggles, your habits, your addictions, the things that you have in your heart that's not of God, that you land it down at his feet by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you're allowing God to manifest in you, to bring you to the fullness of who he is, to see him for what he is in your life as Lord and Savior. And then those of you who don't know the Lord, I pray that something be said or done tonight that will stir you up to get to know him with a hunger and a thirst in your heart for righteousness. Amen. So I'm going to read a devotional before we go into the lesson tonight. And it says, My Savior, thank you for showing me mercy daily. Today I'm asking you to show me how to be a better Christian who shows unconditional mercy upon your people. Lord God, allow me to build beautiful relationships with others and be loyal to them. Let me have a heart to share the pain others are going through, showing them compassion. This life you have given me is not about me. It's all about you, showing love to your people. It's about me caring for others as I care for myself. It's the second greatest commandment you have given me. Lord, let me be empathetic with those people who are in need or afflicted. Father, I want to walk with them until you, Lord Jesus, lift their burdens off, off of them. 
Strengthen me, Lord, God, so I will be able to sustain and endure the obstacles coming forth as I open up myself to do your work. Father, my heart cries, my heart cries to those sick and shut in. My heart cries for the lost souls. Lord God, my heart cries with a cheerful sound of joy because I have more of you, God. Amen, amen, amen. What a great devotional. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. So as we started on last week, we began to engage our lesson concerning a perverse spirit. A perverse spirit. A perverse spirit is defined as people or persons and their actions showing a deliberate an obstinate desire to behave in a way that is unreasonable or unacceptable, often in spite of the consequences. In other words, it's when your life doesn't line up with God's word and you continue to just be rebellious when you know the truth of God's word and you know what God instructs you to do, but yet you choose to keep living a life that's stubborn, stiff neck, unregenerated life, walking in the pathway of darkness and not allowing God's word to change your life. It's your choice. It's up to you to give God your heart and allow his spirit to minister to you. God has the power. He has the ability. He has the, the way of changing and converting your life to be more and more like him as you learn how to surrender yourself to him. God is faithful. He's able to do what we expect him to do when we do the first three things I mention every week. When we yield, surrender, and release Yield, surrender, and release yourself into the will and the plan that God has for your life. Even if you're living a backsliding lifestyle, when you get to the place within yourself where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you yield, surrender, and release your rebellious lifestyle back into the hands of God, God promises this one thing. I will restore you. I will fill you with a fresh outpouring of my anointing. Why? Because he loves us. God has the power to change any situation in your life. Only if you give it to him. If you don't give it to him, you cannot expect a change to take place in your life. Last week, we were in Romans chapter 1. We started out around the 20th verse. Or 27th. Yeah, around the uh, 20th verse, we thought we started out talking about how God gave them over, the people over to their rebellious lifestyles and their, their sinful ways because they refused to follow after his truth. And how they began to change the invisible God and create idols and serve them instead of serving God. So tonight, as we engage in our lesson, we're going to go into the book. In Romans 8, chapter 1, verse 28, it says, let's we'll start at verse 27. It says, Romans chapter 1, verse 27. It says, and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of a woman burned in their lust towards one another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which they which was meet. And it says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things, to do those things which are not convenient. In other words, you keep living a lifestyle contrary to God's word 
God says what's going to happen to you, he's going to give it over, give you over to your desire. To where you're wrong now becomes more visible in your eyesight. Your lifestyle begins to pattern and be conducive to your wrongdoing to where now all of a sudden you're, you're turning away from truth because you no longer want to hear the truth or receive the truth because you've been blinded from the truth. The enemy blinds any person who chooses to continue to be a sinner. You hear what I just said? The enemy blinds any person from the truth who chooses to continue to be a sinner. My Bible tells me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish and have everlasting life. In other words, God gave us the remedy to our sinful lifestyles, and that is receiving Jesus. John uh, uh, 1, 9, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all the righteousness. But the problem comes in, we choose to keep being a sinner. So instead of receiving the forgiveness of sins, the washing of the blood of Jesus to change our lives, to be conducive to God's will, we continue to live a rebellious, stubborn lifestyle, which is a destination, it's the lake of fire, ending up in hell eternity. So a perverse spirit will cause you to turn away from truth and follow after things that's not of truth to keep you going in the pathway of destruction till it eventually destroys your character, it destroys your mentality, it destroys your life, it causes your lifestyle to become, become converted to sin, more prevalent to where no longer truth even is a benefactor in your life anymore. So I don't want the truth anymore because if I hear truth, truth makes me mad. If I hear truth, truth stirs up and, and it causes a conviction to come upon my heart because I'm living a wrong life. So because the life I'm living, the perverse spirit takes control of me, which causes my life now to be so twisted to where I'm walking in the pathway of unrighteousness and I don't want to hear anything about truth. Anything about truth is going to cause me to be uncomfortable. Anything about truth is going to cause my mind to begin to think how bad I'm really living to where I don't want to be in a place where I have to change. People who love living in perverse spirit, they don't want to change. They don't want to stop what they're doing because it's like fornication, adultery, lying, all the stuff people do. There's so many different things in Galatians chapter 5 that talks about. And it talks about these different characteristics of the human nature. But because without Christ in our lives, that's the normal way of living. So the normal way of living is the pathway that leads you to destruction. The Bible tells us that the way that seems right, but the end thereof is the way of death. So if we choose to continue to walk in a rebellious lifestyle, we, we don't walk in a narrow way. We walk in that, that uh, crooked way. The crooked way is a way, we said, it's a way of destruction. But the righteous way, it leads you to life and peace. Jesus puts us this way. In Matthew chapter 7, Verse 13, 14 said, enter ye at the straight gate for wide is the, the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many there be which go thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Isn't that something? How there's only a few people going to find the true way of living? Find the true pathway to walk? Why? Because of the mindset. They're not being converted. Without your mind being regenerated and changed, 
your mind is going to continue to lead you down a pathway that's contrary to God's word without Christ in your life. I don't know about you, but I found out I can't live without Christ. So tonight, as we begin to discuss some of the attributes of a perverse spirit is a broken spirit. Proverbs 15 and 4. An atheist spirit. Proverbs 14, verse 2. We're going to get into some of these scriptures tonight as well. Romans chapter 1, verse 30. Evil actions. Proverbs 17, verse 20 and 23. Filthy mind. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 12. Chapter 23, verse 33. Abortion. Exodus 20, chapter 13, verse 21st chapter 22 to 25, incest, pornography, sexual perversions, child abuse, chronic warriors. That means people who worry all the time. It's, it's a natural thing. Just keep on worrying. So it's your lifestyle. You live a lifestyle worrying. Doctrinal error, twisting the word, foolish, contentious. Person who always stirring up strife. But then it talks about the roots or the works of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. So by their fruits ye shall know them. Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. According to Matthew 18, 18. So by perverse spirit, loose God's spirits, pureness, and holiness. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, and Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29 are our key verses for this section of our lesson tonight. So, Isaiah chapter 19, verse 14. It says, The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in its vomit. So if you're walking in a perverse spirit, the Bible tells us that God will allow a perverse spirit to come into your heart. God will allow a perverse spirit to take control of your mindset because you refuse to change your thinking. God allowed a perverse spirit to engage Egypt to cause them to err in everything they did. And they became as a drunken man that staggers in the vomit. In other words, you return back to the thing that you're supposed to be delivered from. You go back and get it again. Like a cow chewing its curd. The, the cow regurgitates the grass that it eat or the hay that it eats. Then he regurgitate it. Then he swallow, chew it again. Then regurgitate it. Keep eating the same old mess. You have a lot of people in the house of God who claim to have been delivered from many different, different attributes of the flesh or many different things that God has brought to your attention to change your life, but you keep going back to it again. Perverse spirit. That means you have a perverse spirit that can took over your thinking. So the more you keep engaging into this type of lifestyle, the more you keep vomiting it up, then you swallow it again. So it's just like a person who is a prostitute. Come to Christ, get born again, Life begin to change. Times get hard. Hard to pay your bills. You can't seem to keep a job. So you revert backwards to the thing you're familiar with. The thing we talked about several months ago, familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are spirits that something that you know about that has been transferred from generation to generation and that same spirit, it attaches itself to your psyche. So anytime you find yourself in a vulnerable state or a situation where you can't hand handle a problem yourself, guess what we do? We go back to the familiar thing that I was used to. 
So I go back to the alcohol. I go back to the drugs. I go back to that old boyfriend, old girlfriend. Why? Because my wife ain't, ain't treating me right, so I'm going to go back to the thing I'm familiar with. Because I know if I go to my old, my old girlfriend or my old boyfriend, they ain't going to treat me like my wife's treating me. So I'm going to go attach myself back to that same spirit, commit adultery. So all of a sudden now, you ain't got yourself in a deeper situation. If that ain't good enough, okay, let's, let's do, go do this, do this here. So you come to church, you sing in the choir, you're praising God, and all of a sudden that anger spirit that you claim you've been delivered from, but yet you kept it in the treasure box of your heart. So someone says something to you in church or didn't speak to you in church. Matter of fact, we'll put it this way. Someone walks into church, didn't recognize you, didn't speak to you. So you're mad at that individual because they didn't speak to you. It may have been something they're going through at that moment, the reason why they didn't speak to, speak to you at that, at that time. So you assume they don't like you. So all of a sudden now this anger spirit comes on you, and when you meet them outside, now you're going off on the individual for no reason. They may have just had someone died in that family. They may have had a rough morning getting up. Things just didn't go right that day, and they came to church miserable. But instead of you being compassionate, you're filled with anger. So that perverse spirit gets in your mind and brings back the familiar thing that used to dominate your life. You have a lot of relationships are bound in a perverse spirit because they haven't mastered that spirit by surrendering to the Lord. If you don't surrender to the Lord, you cannot expect the change to take place in your life. If you don't give those things, those habits, those addictions, those problems in your life, turn it over to the Lord, you cannot expect God to change anything in your life. So you become like a drunken man staggering in his vomit. So you go back to your vomit. Jesus also talks about a person who puts a hand to the plow and then they turn around and look back. It's not fit for the kingdom. Perverse spirits will keep you unfit for God's kingdom. So here we have in the scripture appears to blame God for the actions of a strong man. The mingling of a perverse spirit in the midst of Egypt. But the evidence of God's word proved that he does not need help of a perverse spirit to accomplish his will on this earth. You hear what I just said? The scripture indicates that God is the cause of of a strong man or the perverse spirit attaching itself to Egypt. But God does not use anything unclean to accomplish his will. God does things his way. When your heart is already filthy, your heart already unclean, God will let the thing that, that you are attracted to take control of your mindset and pull you back into the thing he's trying to deliver you from. Why? You're not listening to his voice. So whose voice are you listening to? Am I listening to God's voice? Or am I listening to the enemy's voice? So you have to make a choice. Either I'm going to listen to God's voice. Or I'm going to listen to the enemy's voice. There's another voice. Or my voice. Three voices that we have that speaks to us on a daily basis. Yourself, the Holy Spirit, or the enemy. And many times... We give in to our own voice and the voice of the enemy and, and neglect the voice of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because I'm really not consecrated. I'm not praying on a daily basis. I pray when I feel like it. I, I seek God's face when I need something. If I need a miracle, a financial breakthrough, oh, I'm going to consecrate. I'm going to pray and seek God's face. I need this money. What if God doesn't bless you with the money? Why? Because you have a wrong intention. If your motive to only seeking God is because you need something from God, you are not serving God. You're serving a perverse spirit. The perverse spirit takes the thing that God has and turns it away from God and make it look like God. You don't believe it? Look at in Genesis chapter 3 when the enemy came into the garden. What did he do? He told Eve something that was appealing that she already knew and twisted it to make it sound like gospel. And she gave it to the perverse spirit 
ate of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, and he told her if she ate of it, she'll be like God. The problem was she was already like God. Adam and Eve were created in God's image and likeness. You've been created in God's image and likeness because the Holy Spirit, the moment you give your life to Christ, you have a new identity. You have a new heart. You have a new nature. And you have to make a choice. Who am I going to live for? A better way of interpreting this passage would be because in Egypt's continual sin, God took his hands off the situation, allowing the perverse spirit to lead the nation into all kinds of problems. You're not going to listen to God's voice. God says, okay, take my hands off. Do it your way. Just like going to get a job. You fabricate your application. You go in there and lying in the beginning. You get the job because you lied about getting a job. Then the job don't last. Because the blessings of the Lord make us rich and add no sorrow. The lies of the enemy make you poor and brings much sorrow. You hear what I just said? The blessings of the Lord make us rich and add no sorrow, but the, the lies of the enemy will bring you much sorrow. In other words, anything you have to manipulate, lie, cheat, steal to get in life just to get ahead, you're bringing your own demise. And you're destroying your own credibility and your own character. The straw that broke the pro proverbial camel's back is found in the third verse where it says, the Egyptians sought the help of idols, charmers, and familiar spirits and wizards that the automatic hands-off signal where God is concerned. The Egyptians, when they found themselves in many problems with the different plagues, did not seek God's face. They sought their own way of fixing their problem. And God will do just like he did with them. Take his hands off. He would allow, he would not allow tolerate or tolerate divided allegiance. God will not tolerate divided allegiance. Where's your allegiance tonight, my brother, my sister? Who are, who are you pledging to live for? Where's your heart? Who's driving your, your, your cart of life? Who's your instructor? Who is your Lord? The first chapter of Romans is the New Testament equivalent of the above mentioned in Egypt, debacle, or debacle. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. When people insist on doing the things that are unnatural, God steps back. A reprobate mind moves in. In that state, they become so twisted in their thinking process that they believe their lifestyles is actually normal. Isn't that something? You keep doing wrong for so long. It's like people who shack, been shacking for years. Some have been shacking for 15 years. But because they've been doing it for so long, it's the normal way of life. Society accepts that. So according to man's law, common law, you're married. But according to God's law, you're living a life that's not married. You're doing the married things, but you're not living in a relationship according to God's standards. So anytime you continue to keep doing things that's not of God, you're living according to twisted thinking. This attitude is evidenced in the homosexual community today as they seek respectfully in their own perverted practices. Homosexual lifestyle is an abomination to the Lord. God speaks against it throughout the scriptures. Leviticus chapter 18, all these different things. God has so many different scriptures that validates his grotesque to this type of lifestyle. It's perverted practices. And anytime you live this type of lifestyle, I have people tell me, God knows my heart. When I die, I'm going to heaven. The Bible tells us 
that anyone who lives this type of behavior or this type of lifestyle will not inherit the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter. Say no drunkard, no homosexual, no liar, no thief. No type of sinful lifestyle will inherit the kingdom of God. One thing about God, he knows those who are real. He knows those who are sincere. He knows those who are trusting, those who are depending on him to carry them. And he knows those who are rejecting him. God is always the same. He don't change. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But God's word has not changed. Perversion is still perversion. God didn't create two men or two women in the Garden of Eden. He created man and woman and blessed that union. That was the prototype of sexual behavior for humans, for the human race. Time, customs, and philosophies may have changed since that time, but God's word has not changed. Those who obey God's word receive God's blessings. Those who obey God's words receive God's blessings. Those who don't feel like obeying and pleasing God will continue down a pathway of gloom and doom. Those who don't only feel the displeasure of God, but also experience the results of their perversion. For this cause, Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, God gave them up to foul affections, for even their women did not change their natural use into that which was against nat nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust towards one another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, receiving in themselves the recompense of the error in which was meet. God says it like this. Your vile affections, he will allow to take control of your entire life. Let you burn your lust to do what you want to do, and you will receive your reward in the end. A comparatively new disease called AIDS, acquired immune uh, deficiency syndrome, has thousands of gay men sweating in their terror. Although a few cases have appeared in non-homosexuals, the overwhelming majority have been either homosexual, bisexual men, or people directly associated with with the needless as the homosexuals. Hemophiliacs depend upon blood donors to maintain their lives have also been widely affected. Nearly 100 million people worldwide have died from AIDS by the end of the century if cures of vaccines were not found. Fewer than 14% of AIDS victims have survived more than three years after being diagnosed and no victim has fully recovered. The median number of male sexual partners for homosexual patients have contracted AIDS. And we got over 200,000 people by now. It appears that medical science is on the road of discovering vaccines, which they have, you know, they have, they've been discovering vaccines and still have not released anything yet to cure people of this disease, but it's okay because God is still in control. Even then, the vaccine will not cure thousands who have already contracted AIDS. It only protects those who do not have it from contacting it. Although the plague have far reached effect on humanity. The best way to keep from becoming infected is to live like God's word says we should live. Those who embrace the new morality and its related bunches, brunches may scoff at God's word. In other, uh, in other words, those who continue to keep living those type of lifestyles, they, they reject God's word. But the truth is that those who insist on breaking God's law receive in themselves the recompense of their error. Leviticus chapter 20 Spells out the gravity of sexual perversion, homosexuality, incest, adultery, bisestio, were all punishable by death under the law. You know, it's something I think about the Old Testament a lot. Because if we were living in those times with the same stuff people do today, many millions of people would be dead. 
because God did not tolerate the rebellion, the sinful lifestyle of many people during that time to where if it means killing off a generation, God did it. Even when God wiped the earth clean with Noah and his family, saved Noah and his family only. Why? Because the people had become so twisted in their wickedness. They were perverse. And God says, I have to cleanse the earth. And God did just that. And because of that, now we're living in a time where sin is really running rampant. Where folks are rebellious. They don't, they don't value God anymore in their lives. Not surrendering to God's authority. Not following after his truth. The twisted mind of the perverse man or woman is a stronghold of Satan. The perverse stronghold delights in seeing how far we, he can deter mankind from God's blueprint for human conduct. If God's word commands one thing, the perverse spirit seeks to lead humanity in the exact opposite direction. That is so fascinating. Because when you get her understanding by the spirit of revelation, the enemy does the opposite of what God does. He takes God's word, he will twist it and change it, and then he'll lure you into following and believing it till he destroys your life. Isaiah shows how much Satan has succeeded in doing just that through the centuries. God puts it this way, for my thoughts are not like your thoughts, neither my ways like your ways, says the Lord. For as higher as the heavens are than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. Observe the following God-given gift that man has twisted and perverted. Sex, music, earth environments, philosophies, the family unit. The atoms, television, the printed pages, the appetites for food, the list goes on and on. Show a group of people a white sheet of paper with a small black mark in the middle and ask them what they see. 99% of them will answer a black mark. Occasionally someone will say, I see a sheet of paper. Have you noticed that when people give directions, they always tell you to go to the first red light? Why don't they say send you to the first green light? Why are bars and taverns more successful when the interior lighting is dim? Paul says the reason is that men become vain in their imaginations and foolish hearts were darkened. Romans 1 verse 21. So because the heart is so wicked, we choose darkness rather than light. The reason why so many people go to bars and clubs and, and they claim they have so much fun because their hearts are darkened. Many people in church, if your heart is not flooded with light, you're flooded with darkness. And God is trying to get our attention to change our thinking and allow the Spirit of God to wash you clean by His Word and the blood of the Lamb. Unregenerated man is not synchronized with God's universe. Sin has twisted him so that right is wrong, dark is light, a lie is truth. Satan is credible and God is out of date. Isaiah puts it like this, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. People who attend a crusade in Latin America talked about children being alcoholics. You know, we're living in a time where so much stuff is going on in our land. The protest, the violence, the looting, all these different things are taking place because people are giving in to the seducing spirit of perversion and their hearts are being turned away from truth. But I encourage you tonight, get in God's word. Allow the word of God to change your thinking. Because the only way you're going to overcome any demonic force or stronghold in your life is when you recognize what it is, where it came from, 
and the influence that it has and allow the Spirit of God to change this thing right here, your thinking. And when God begins to show you you through the mirror of the Word, I guarantee you're going to begin to change, either good or for the bad. The choice is yours. When God convicts your heart, what are you listening to? Are you listening to his voice? Are you following the enemy's voice or your voice? So as we come to the close of another session tonight, I pray something has been said to encourage you, to stir you up with conviction, to help change your life. This is a life-changing message. This is not a fly-by-night message that God has given me. It's something that you need to apply to your life. Get in the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to get inside of you. Allow your ear gates to be tuned in to God's frequency to hear His voice. When you hear God's voice, God's voice is going to speak to you in a quiet, quiet tone. And when He speaks, He's going to speak something so profound that's going to prick your heart to change it. Many of you out there tonight, I pray that the Holy Spirit is working on your life to change your destiny. As you receive this word tonight, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I need the Savior. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and wash me clean. Now, fill with the Holy Spirit that I'll become a servant for you with power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight, welcome to the family of God. If you're one of those who are there who, and you know that you've been breaking God's law and God's decrees, only the light of God's word can break. Only the light of God's words can break. Only the light of God's words can break the spiritual darkness and reveal the twisted conditions that have been planted in your heart. And Jesus informs his disciples, as well as the human race in general, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you're out there and rebellious, been living a rebellious lifestyle, you turned away from walking with the Lord. You once walked with him. I want you to pray with me this prayer. God says, if you've been a backslider, tonight is your night to, re to return, return to your first love. So repeat this prayer after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I acknowledge that I have re rebelled and turned away and went into a backsliding life. I'm asking you to restore my heart back into right standing, and right relationship with you that I can live my life from this day forward with no condemnation being cleansed by the blood of the Lamb then I thank you for restoring me and cleansing me and making me new in Jesus name I pray amen God bless you tonight I thank you again for tuning in tonight to this Bible class I Pray something has helped you because it's helping me. The more I teach it, the more I read it. It's helping me get myself in order. But I thank you again. Next week, spread the news, 6 o'clock p.m. TNBC, Tuesday night Bible class. will resume again on next week, Tuesday. The Lord says the same. And I pray that you begin to search the scriptures and find our scriptures on perversion. This is your homework. Find you some scriptures tonight that deals with perversion. And allow those scriptures to bring changes in your heart. And I guarantee God will give you a revelation. And that revelation is going to give you insight into the heart of God to change your destiny. God bless you. Father, I thank you again for this lesson tonight. I pray that it has not fallen upon deaf ears. But those who heard the word, received the word that was sown into their heart gracefully. And that the word will be planted in good soil to produce fruit in the lives of the hearers and bring a change for eternity. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Spread the news. Share this video with others that they may hear the word of God tonight. And be blessed until next week. Shalom. Which means peace be unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.